Okay, who are we coaching today? Let's see. So, today at the coaching table we have the Silver 3, Gold 1, Peak, Sage, Main. Very exciting. Not really. Now, this guy won a free coaching giveaway on my Discord server. And we're going to see what his problems are and how he can improve himself. First things first, when it comes to his tracker, headshot percentage is abysmal. Like, this is fucking abysmal. Like, your aim, my dude, needs to be improved. More aim training, better equipment, find perfect sensitivity, find this, do that. Like, aim, g only God knows. Only God knows what we're going to see today. Now, when it comes to the weapons, his impact in eco, pistol, and full by rounds is also quite abysmal. He is dying way too much, and I feel that this KD in silver lobbies can be two times higher. Okay, maybe not two times, but, you know, 20% higher. Now, he's primarily playing a Vandal. Okay. Okay, okay. Spectre and Classic. He's also touching the operator a bit, like in a sexual way. That's good, that's good. And he is not... You need to use a shorty as a secondary weapon. Like, oh, guys, come on. Come on. I, I've been teaching you this for the past three years. Learn how to play shorty. Pick the shorty as a secondary weapon always. You will trade yourself for some very easy kills. In all of the lobbies in Valorant. Like, if I was not using a shorty, I think I would die, like, two times more without being traded. Okay. When it comes to the agent that he is maining, like Sage, Omen, and Gecko, why the, why the flipping F would anyone main in silver and gold a Sage? You need to be doo-doo, man. Like, like, you need to be, like, mentally broken to do that. Like, literally, if you already want to play some kind of a Sentinel in the lobbies that are below Immortal one, I would always go with a chamber. <laughs> Sentinel. Uh, chamber, uh, Killjoy, or Cypher. Killjoy would probably be my number one pick because, I mean, in these lobbies, players don't know how to use WASD keys to move, and it's just easy for you to, you know, like, kill the enemies, clear the angles, clear the bomb sites uh, with the uh, nano swarms, uh, uh, make the pressure, control the map, like, but you said Kildra is bad for low elo last week. She is. She. You should not even consider playing Sentinels before Immortal 1 in Valorant. If you want your progress to be as fast as possible. And if you want to improve as fast as possible. Like my guy has 60% win rate on Omen. He probably played like, how many matches he played on Omen? 15 matches. Like, like play Omen, man. If you, if, you, if you can keep this 60% win rate with Omen, just play fucking Omen, you know, like, wh why are you playing Sage, man? Like, like, th this is so stupid for, for, for a silver player. Like, it's so easy to carry these ranks, like, silver and gold, with Omen, with Reyna, with Phoenix, with Jet, with, with Fade, with, I don't know, like, Gecko, like, like, basically, there's so many better options than playing a Sage, man. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? So, I would recommend you, man, stick with the Omen. Like, Omen, Omen worked great for you in the, in the, last, uh, in the last act. Uh, when it comes to the KD, like, my dude is dying too many times, man, without being traded. Like, uh, he is either, his mechanical skill is either way too very bad, or just he is picking up wrong gunfights 24-7. Uh, damage per run, okay, I mean, for a gold player, like, I don't know what to say. On Fracture, he actually has the highest win rate. And the Fracture is the best map of his. Okay, let's see what he's doing on Fracture. Uh, bro, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, literally, only if you are in some kind of a relationship with Sage, and you're watching the Rule 34 of Sage quite often, only then I would, like, uh, play the Sage in these lobbies. 
Like, if you want to improve yourself as fast as possible as a player, I mean, oh man, bring, like, from the Asians that, that you're playing, I don't know, what, what the hell he, he played? He plays only Sage, man. Bro, fuck the Sage. I mean, we're gonna do the water review on Sage anyways, but whatever, like, we'll see. Uh, now, uh, okie dokie, okie dokie. I mean, the problem with Sage is, like, uh, there is no outplay mechanic. Like, if, 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 if you, if you have such a bad mechanical skill, you know, where you have 15% headshot ratio, like, just, just, just play Killjoy then. Like, you know, like, play Killjoy and Cypher. Like, it's such, so stupid to play with, with such a mechanical skill playing Sage. But okay, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what's happening for him. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, nothing else I can say from this, like, uh, you know, this tracker doesn't give me any, any real information. <clears throat> okay, he is Silver 3 right now. Let's put the Silver logo, and let's go on to the Fracture. Baba la bui. Chat, how are you today, guys? Huh? What's happening? If you learn the Grim Walls, Sage could be deadly. Do you think a silver player and a gold player can perform effectively the Grim Walls at the right moment of time? Like, no, no way. Literally no way. I mean, these guys are hiring me. Like, when, when you hire me for coaching, and when you buy a VOD review, or when you get in a VOD review giveaway, like, I expect that your desire is to be the Radiant player one day, or maybe a pro player in Valorant. I, I, I don't coach players to have fun. I coach players to get to fucking Radiant as soon as possible, and, and, and because anyone can be Radiant in this game. Like, no matter how bad or good you are, I mean, no matter how bad you are, you can be Radiant. Literally, it's so, it's so easy to play Valorant. The easiest game in, in, in history of, of video games. Now, let's go to the Fracture. Oh, flashbang, flashbang! Warning, flashbang warning. Sorry, 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 sorry. I forgot to turn on the the full screen mode. It's my birthday tomorrow. I'm drinking today. I mean, you should be drink like when you're playing Valorant, you should be drinking like 24/7 regardless of whether you're it is your birthday or not. Good. How about you? Have a scat. I'm great. I just took a hot shower, actually a cold shower, and uh, 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 we are going to like uh, play the premiere after this vote review. We're playing the first match. I am both and sword. Drink and smoke the same shit. What? 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 I think he meant alcohol. I also mean alcohol. I mean, if you're playing Valorant, like, you, 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 you either need to, like, you know, you need to sacrifice your mental health for the elo. And I think it's a worthy sacrifice. You know, the first time hitting that Radiant, I, I remember it, like, is there a clip of me hitting Radiant on Twitch? For the first time? I think this, this was not the first time, just second to find it. Like, is, is there a clip of me hitting Radiant for the first time? There must be a clip. Let me find it. That moment, that moment was, you know, I mean, th there's no video. Look at this. Look at this happiness. Th th this was actually the second time. This was the second time I got Radiant in Valorant. Second time that I got traded in Valorant, like, it was uh, episode uh, 1, act 1. Listen to this. Bro, I used the same crosser for like 3 years, man. Train one Two enemy one remaining. more. GG guys, GG, I love you all. Defense Come on! Win. Come on, Riot Games! Be basically, in act 1 of episode 1, I, 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 I don't know if you guys played that back then, but uh, uh, you got Radiant randomly. You know, you just needed to have a very high win rate. You needed to win a lot of the matches in a row. Look at this. <laughs> Come on, Riot Games. 
Come on, man. Come on. I'm waiting here. Now, now I get radiant, I'm like, yeah, guys, we finally got it, you know, like, whoa, 20 times radiant, yes, sir. <laughs> that was good, that was good, that was good. Okay, Sage Fracture. Let's do the c c c coaching, free vote reviews time. Let's teach you some cool tech of the Sage players. What do you think about insta-locking Omen? Platinum 1. Ha <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Like, anyways, like, uh, in all of the ranks that are below Immortal 1, you fucking suck with smokes. Like, like, basically, controllers below Immortal 1 don't know what the fuck they're smoking. So it's better for you to be a smoker than, than, than giving other players to actually smoke. You know? Come on. Yo! Blank Nade! Thank you a lot for the Twitch Prime sub. And thank you for scamming Jeff Bezos. Nice scam, nice scam. Nice scam. Okay. Let's see what this silver guy is doing. Silver gold lobby. Okay. Attacker side of fracture. Regardless what effing rank you are. You always want to use this mindset and this strategy. Like, I've been repeating this 24-7, but I'm going to repeat it one more time. You're playing Fracture. Your quote-unquote default bomb site is the B site on both attack and defense. What the hell that means for you? That means that, statistically speaking, B site has less success rate of retake than the A site in the solo queue. What does that mean? That means that... It is easier to attack B than to defend it, and it is easier to play a post on B than to actually retake the site. So, generally speaking, on the attacker side of this map, what you primarily want to abuse, when you absolutely have no idea what to do, and you have no idea where the enemies are, you have no idea what's happening on the map. Autopilot mode. You want to abuse the arcade area of the map on the attack, and you want to abuse and take the control of the aiming as well. A lot of the players in solo queue make a mistake where they, when they are splitting the B site, they split primarily through the B main area of the map. What do I mean primarily? Like, I don't know, three or five players are going through the B main and zero to two players are going through the arcade. That is absolutely stupid. It is easier to push the B-set in solo queue through the arcade area of the map, clear the arcade properly, take the control of it, take the control of the tower, and push the site, then pushing the B-main area of the map. In B-main, your teammates can die in a horrible death. Like, basically, from utility. From enemy jet peeking with operator, enemy jet double object, enemies pushing you with the smokes, dashes, shit. Like, in arcade you just have more control, more space and more room to actually move around and to execute the site. Same goes for the A set. Like, I see sometimes players go 5 players dish. How the fuck do you expect to push, like, uh, A set with 5 players to the dish? Like, yeah, it can work. Yeah, it, it, it is possible. But when you're playing on the attack of Fracture... Like, uh, it is very important to take the aim and control. Because if you control aim in, you can split the enemies through the sand, push immediately through the A side, through the choke point, like, you know, the limited amount of risk, huge pressure onto the enemies, easier. So, what do we do in the first round of Fracture? 
In the first of round of Fracture, you always want to call to your teammates, no matter if they are boosted bonobos or not. Take the, take the spike with yourself, by the way. Hey, guys! Let's push S5 through the arcade area of the map, and let's push the B site. Nothing else. You know. Brimstonezinho, give us the smoke here. Give us the smoke here. That's it. Uh, you can do a 5-man push through the arcade, or you can do a 4 push through the arcade and one player lurks through the B main area of the map. Like, this is a lurking area of the map. Like, this is not a primary area of the map through which you wanna attack. So, in this round, if I was playing Sage, I would just go with a classic pistol, light shield, wall, tell my teammates, hey guys, let's push the arcade S5. We're pushing Changa, 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 Langa, Banga. We clear all of these angles, maybe jump spot the enemies, you know, clear this position, that position, clear the enemies there, clear the enemies here, clear the gen, and we're walling the gen, pushing into the site, taking the site control, and then pushing onto the tower together with our teammates. Simple as that. Basically, this is the absolutely best strategy for the solo queue of Fracture in any elo. There's a very limited amount of mistakes that your teammates can make. And everyone is playing on a refrain potential. Now, let's see what he's doing. So let's go away. Okay. This type of economy doesn't exist in Valorant. Like, if you're already if whenever you're playing a classic pistol or a shorty in the first round, you need to have a light shield. Like wh why the hell didn't you buy a light shield right now? Like my dude doesn't have a light shield. Okay. Now, when you're pushing through the A main area of the map, like make sure that you clear every possible angle where the enemies can be. Even if your teammates, even if your teammates are going in front of you. So here, you know, I destroy the arrow. I'm pushing in, clearing that, clearing this, clearing this, clearing this position, jump spotting the enemies, moving forward, clearing that, moving forward, we're clearing this, waiting for the smokes, doing the sage wall here, for the site, pushing the site. Uh, when, when enemies give you this type of a smoke in the aiming, and you're playing Sage, like, uh, on Fracture, you, you, sh you should tank them. You should tank the enemies, because it's very easy through this smoke to position this wall here. Like, just make sure that in a custom server, you're, pra you're practicing your, sm your, your wall placement, you know, like, uh, in general. Like, just, you know, make sure that the wall looks like this. Curve it a bit, place it there, go out, end of the story. You cannot do this. <laughs> you cannot do this. And also, this is the reason why I really feel that uh, in these lobbies, on Fracture, it would be 10 times better for you to play maybe a Killjoy or Brimstone than playing a stupid Sage. Look at the smokes on the map. Like, like what the fuck is our Brimstone smoking? Like, beside, like, a... Uh, some kind of LSD, marijuana, like shit. Like, the, the guy, we, we, we are entering the site, we don't have a single smoke for the site. Anyways, like, in this round, what you should have prioritized is doing the wall through the smoke, and then picking a gunfight with the enemies as your teammates are going out and you should be following them. And here, like, when you enter the site, like, one huge mistake that players are doing, uh, fight the fights before planting, spiking the spikes. So, essentially, don't go for the spike plant before you clear the full site, before all of the enemies are dead. Planting the spike seriously doesn't matter. Essentially, only in the rounds where your are Ecor Halbai, you should be dying for a spike plant, and you should be trying to plant the spike as soon as possible. 
for the economy and of course for you know like uh, uh generally like uh uh to waste the time of the enemy's retake you know generally speaking you know when you plant a spike in a silver lobby it seriously doesn't matter so here you know you sh we should have killed the sova first clear the site do the wall then we notice on the minimap that our jet is very low we heal the jet fight the fights and then we spike the spikes <laughs> that shot of the Sova was a bit lucky, to be honest, like... <laughs> I mean, silver guy hitting that shot. Ge generally speaking, like... Uh, <clears throat> generally speaking, on Fracture, the absolutely best pattern of pushing on the attacker side is the following. So basically, like, uh, you want to push three times in a row, to the arcade and that's it like that is how you build unpredictable pattern on fracture it is the easiest area of the map to be pushed easiest area of the map to be controlled easiest area of the map to be contested like three rounds in a row call for the five man aggressive push to the arcade if your teammates follow you they follow you if, the, if your teammates don't follow you take the spike and you will force them to follow you. Just tell them, Hey guys, I'm trolling, I'm, 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 I'm taking the spike to the B. <laughs> like, I don't know, something like that. And they, and they are gonna follow you. Now, uh, if you lose the first round, and you're, you're pushing Arcade again, you just wanna fight for the tower as fast as possible. You know, like, buy the shorty, buy the frenzy, go onto the ropes, do this, do this, take the tower control, and then from the tower, Take the site together with your teammates. If you win the first round, and whenever enemies have lower economy than you, never fight for the tower immediately. And never fight for the tower alone. So basically, you know, let's say I won the first round on Fracture, and I have the now like Spectre, Heavy Shield, uh, and Utility. I will push here, jump spot the enemies, do the slow orb there, clear all of these angles here, push, 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 clear the box, do the wall, baba, bui, clear that, push in, maybe do a slurp there, and then I would like uh, fight the enemies on the tower together with my teammates. Like three times push through the arcade, and then in the fourth round you can do whatever the hell you want. You can play slow, you can play fast, you can push A, you, you can split A, you can push arcade again, because you apply a huge mental pressure onto the enemies, for three rounds in this area of the map, regardless of the outcome of these rounds. Where are we going? Right yeah, I mean, as, as, as per usual, like a silver player with a very bad crosshair placement. Like, I mean, I, 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 I don't even need to watch like uh, the rest of the VOD. I can already see that your crosshair placement is, is terrible. Like, make sure to polish out your crosshair placement in that match, in custom server. Uh, also, like, uh, in my previous VOD reviews, I've discussed, like, some tips and tricks how you can have a better crosshair placement. Like, basically, you know, every single box is almost the same height as the, you know, player's model. Just, you know, place your crosshair at the top of the boxes, you know, be below the boxes, actually, like this. Also, what you can use for a better crosshair placement, you can use the lineups on the walls. Like, every single wall can tell you something about your crosshair placement. Like, for an example, let's say I'm uh, pushing the... I'm pushing the A main area of the map. I know that my crosshair should be right here for the enemies at the back of the site. Why? Because this line is the exact same height as the player's model behind that box. Let's say I'm picking the enemies there. On top of the on top of the dish i know that my crosser needs to be slightly higher than this line right here so i'll place my crosser around here and peek like this peek like that perfect crosser placement like build up these line uh, crosser placement lineups into your gameplay 
and also like you know just pay attention on overall objects around you like where the enemies can be how the objects look like based on the enemies etc etc What should I do if our, if our smoker doesn't listen to us and he thinks he's like a duelist and he waits for us to die and then he dies too? Nothing. You need to find a way to play around that uh, that smoker. Like uh, probably the fast the fast pushes won't work. You will have to play for the picks and wait for the enemies to make a mistake. And trust me, like if you're already playing in silver lobby or a gold lobby, enemies will make a lot of mistakes. I mean here if you already bought a wall whenever you're pushing the whenever you're pushing the B side of uh, of fracture with sage you should always wall off your teammates like uh, to cross the site like basically you know doing a wall right here and just getting on top of the getting onto the site crossing here like this and then picking a fight with the enemies like uh, or maybe you can wall off the enemies you know in the canteen and maybe fight for the you know control of the site and control of the Generator, but in this scenario like where you have a smoke your gecko needs to cross to plant the spike because he doesn't have wingman I guess we need to vault him off and we need to cross into the site uh, Bad wall and also like very very slow game decision like when, he has a wingman like what the fuck was he doing? Okay, we planted a spike I mean, when you're playing these eco and halberd rounds with, with classic pistols and, and economy weapons, like a cr classic frenzy, etc. Like, pick the gunfights that are actually working in your favor. You, you don't need to fight, you know, long-range gunfights anymore. Like, just wait for the enemies to push you and use the classic pistol as a shotgun. Like, you'll have higher chances of killing the enemies than trying to poke them behind the wall right now and in some kind of a long-range fight. Not bad. For, for an equal round, this was like solid. We planted the spike. Two enemies are dead. Good job. Three enemies are dead. Good, good, good. Okay, we're pushing A again. I mean, listen. Th this is a mistake that players make enormous amount of times in solo queue. Even in Radiant and Immortal. If one of your teammates is already stomping like an animal, like a fucking elephant in front of you, just follow the jet. I mean, there's no point in you and Gecko walking right now when your teammates got a kill in dish and enemies know that you're pushing A. What are you doing? You know, take the aim and control, take, push fast, split the sight, end of the story. And that arrow... You know, like, just destroy it. You don't need to hide from it. My man is an Uber driver, bro. Taxi minister. He's playing the taxi game, man. Like, I, I can already see, like, that your movement is not not good enough. Like, same, same... You remember the last photo review that we did? With a guy that had Uber driving peaking and movement? Like, same shit. Like, basically... You cannot move around the angles, like this, and like this. You're, you're not driving a taxi, man. You're playing FPS game, like, you know, m cut the angles. Make your movement rough, like, like uh, basically, like, you know, if my jet opens the doors and the enemy can be there, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. Place my crosshair there. Then, do this to clear that angle. Clearing that position, jiggle peeking, left and right, left and right, left and right. I cannot drive around the corners like a maniac. Because you're in a huge disadvantage then. This is why, guys, you should always, like, whenever you're playing inside of the smokes, always pay attention on the minimap. Like, essentially, like, whenever I'm moving through the smokes, 
my eyes are not on the screen, my eyes are up there. Like I'm paying attention where I'm looking at, where the enemies are, and where I need to peek, so that I don't lose myself inside of the smoke. Okay, I, I, I would like to say it was a nice round, but it, it was not a nice round. Like, uh, you needed to push the A-set much faster, you needed to support your teammates in the CT much faster, and your game decisions need to be faster as well. Uh, enemies are making one huge mistake that players make also in Radiant and Immortal on Fracture. What is that mistake? You cannot play Fracture on a defender's side without the aiming control. Like, the most stupid thing that you can do on Fracture is selling the aiming control to the enemies and playing passively from the sand and from the sight and playing on the dish here. Almost every single round, you should be deploying a smoke, stun, grenade, or something to delay and stop enemies push there, and you should be picking the fights with the enemies here and here, and then slowly digressing into the bomb site and into a bit more passive positions. Aim and control is extremely important on fracture because if you lose it, it's so easy for the enemies to split you from three different positions. If, if you lose a control of one area of the map on A site, like when you're playing on the defender side, let's say you lose a control of uh, uh, A main, fight for the full dish control, pull yourself back onto the dish, clear the dish completely, and then come back on A. If you lose the dish control, fight for the A main control. You cannot stay on the A site and pray to God that you're gonna survive, you know, the, the pinch of the enemies. <laughs> that was an interesting fight, man. You need to chill a bit, man. Like, like you know, you're not playing a Spectre. You're not playing a Stinger. Like, uh, stop and shoot, man. Like, th th there is a reason why you enable this shooting error. Error. So that you can see when you're accurate and when you're not accurate. Like, this shit is fully blue for you. Like, don't panic when you see the enemies. Like, enemies are not better than you are. You're playing in the same elo as they are. Like, stop, shoot, strafe. Stop, shoot, strafe. Don't, don't, you know, this panicking will lose you a lot of the fights. Let's trade, let's play. Oh, no, man, no, man. Sage, can you give me here? This is something that, that this wall is something that uh, you should practice like uh, in a custom server. Like basically, you know, you should already pre-place this wall from this choke point here. You know, like when I'm inside of the smoke, I will look at the ground, place the wall straight forward, slightly shift it to the left like this, and I'll just place it, you know, as I'm going out of the smoke like this and fight for the site. In, in this scenario, like, you should have played with your teammates because, uh, you know, uh, literally, like, uh, enemies are destroying your jet, you're in a 2 versus 3 scenario, and you can hold this aim and push also from the site. Like, in this scenario, I would never leave the site. Especially not in this elo. Like, you're not playing some kind of a post-plant agent with lineups, you're playing Sage. Like, in this scenario, like, you had to play with the jet, especially because, like, uh, in these lobbies, you just... Never know how good or how bad your teammates are gonna play these scenarios. Like, I will always focus on the team play. I will always focus on refragging my teammates that is in the most amount of danger. And that's it. Like, in this scenario right here, like, we are doing the wall. Planting the spike here. 
and I'm playing on the site with my with my jet. You know, like I'm clearing this angle, clearing that angle, watching that angle. Like we cannot play in the aim in if your teammates are not not there. Eighty ways. Use your slow ops. Uh, fifty percent of aiming problems for a majority of the players in Valorant come from the bad crosshair placement and wrong movement. Like, movement and crosshair placement are 50% of your aim in Valorant. Like, this crosshair placement and this movement that you have is unacceptable. You need to go into the deathmatch, you need to go into the practice range, and try to replicate what higher ELO players are doing. Like, you know, basically here, my crosser for the enemy sage cannot be there. That's a body shot. I need to place it slightly higher here. Then I cannot stand still and walk. I need to, you know, jiggle peek a bit. I need to like uh, go in, go out. I need to strafe a bit and pick that fight. Take a cover. Then surprise the enemies with different type of peeks. Use your slows. Hear yourself. Go away. Good job! <laughs> Good job! I mean, I, I, I would like... I would like to, to, to say good job, but... Uh, I mean, come on. Like... Uh, your shooting mechanics... Your crosser placement... Your movement needs to be fixed. Like, essentially... I don't know if there is any point of watching this VOD anymore... If, if you don't fix your mechanics. Like, going up, uh, like, okay, how to fix all of this shit? How to fix all of this shit? So, you want to fix your movement, and you want to fix your shooting, uh, shooting, sh uh, like, techniques. Go in a shooting range. D develop a small 10 to 15 minutes routine where you practice everything that you're missing in your gameplay. Like, what you're missing right now. Like, what, what mechanical problems you have? Mechanical problems. So the number one problem is crouching before the fight even happens. Bind your crouch in that match or in the practice range to some button like jump or like uh, to, to, to maybe I don't know, like bind your crouch to, to knife or something like that. And play a death match like that. So that you're consistently hurting yourself and giving your brain a negative feedback when you perform some action. Second thing... Oh, wait, we're playing solo. Just a second. Second thing that you're missing in your mechanics is movement, jiggle, jiggle... F how do you write this? Like, like just proper peeking and strafing. Like, how to practice all of this? I don't know. Like, there's multiple different ways how you can practice. Like, you can turn on, for an example, like, let's say, 100 of these bots appearing, and just strafe. You know, go left, right, shoot. Left, right, stop, shoot. Left, right, try to track the enemy. Stop and shoot. Stop and shoot. Like, or maybe what you can do, you can do a practice on, do the sage wall here, in front of you, and just peek the enemies around the corners. You know, go for the one-taps. Go for the one-taps. Then peek the enemies from this side. You know, like... Develop some kind of a 10 to 15 minutes routine per day in deathmatch, training range, and custom server to practice all of this shit. Like, third thing is your crosshair placement is terrible. For majority of the angles that you peeked. How to practice a proper crosshair placement. This is how you practice it. You go in a deathmatch, 
and you're trying to pre-aim and you're trying to like clear all of the common positions where the enemies can be at every moment of time or you can go in a custom server and just practice clearing all of these angles that you're approaching in the real game scenario like try to imagine you know how do enemies bodies look like there or maybe invite some of your friends you know play a one versus one custom server try to practice with your friend like tell him you know uh let's practice attacking the a site tell your friend to hide on some position on a and try to clear every single angle until you, you approach that friend then the friend can go on the attacker side, you can be on defense for an example, and hide somewhere. Like that is how you can practice, you know, holding the angles and clearing the angles and cross their placement as well. I mean, you probably have one friend that is in the same rank as you are, and trust me, it would be more beneficial if you spend like uh, one hour with your friend in a custom server, than two hours of playing a ranked match in these stupid lobbies. Yo, turp out through all. Well, three men. How long before the premiere thing, Papito? Like, we have like uh, one hour. One hour, one hour. Also, this knife gives you like. Uh, uh, this knife gives you like minus 20% aimbot. Can you hear me, Sage? Okay, let's revive our teammate. I, I need to see that again. <laughs> that was interesting. I mean, uh, in this type of fights, you cannot really go for the ADS. This was a bit of a lucky shot. Like, uh, when you're clearing these angles, you want to clear them without the ADS. And you want to clear these angles like this, you know, just standing here. Jiggle peeking, bam, bam, bam. No ADSing. Your duty is not over. Your duty is not over. We we cannot do this. Like uh, in Valorant. Listen, guys. When you're clearing the angles, there is like. Three ways, four ways to clear the angle. First way of clearing the angles is with utility. Deploying some kind of a utility to cut off the enemy's vision or to slow down the enemies, to stun them, or deploying some kind of a utility to flash the enemies, or deploying some kind of a utility to reveal the enemies. Utility usage. Second thing that we use when you're clearing angles where the enemies can be on multiple different vertical and horizontal positions, jump spotting, like this. Moving forward, jumping at the moment of time when you're getting out of the cover and using your keys to move towards the wall, backwards. S and A, S and A, jump S and A. Clear the angles, place your crosser in the wall, peek the enemy. Third thing that you're using to clear the angles in Valorant is using your teammates. and Sometimes it is worth it to actually bait your allies and, you know, take the second fight. You know, like, here for an example, what you could have used before you actually peek the enemies here is the Gecko's ultimate. If the Gecko is already ulting, wait for the ultimate to reveal these angles and then peek. And fourth thing that you, you know, want to do in Valorant when you're clearing the angles, having a proper crosser placement and peeking methods for every single angle. Like here, if I'm approaching enemies in a choke point where they can be on multiple different vertical and horizontal positions, I cannot peek the enemies while shifting. I just cannot do that. Like, I need to clear every single angle by cutting the pie and doing this. Notice how I'm not making a single footstep. That is called a silent step mechanic in Valorant. Basically, you can move for a certain moment of time without even giving the sound to the enemies. Like, abuse that. Or, you know, just swing the enemies with a proper crosshair placement. Like, your mechanical skill 
He is bad. Okay, we're pushing our kid. No, I'm, 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 I'm not going to even speak about this. Like, 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 basically, one big note here is stop being an Uber driver. Cut the angles with proper movement and crosser placement. End of the story. Like, literally, cannot, cannot, cannot bother anymore. Okay, this was a huge movement mistake, and a huge mistake like that a lot of the players make. When you're going up the ropes on Fracture, you never want to go up the ropes like this, moving through the ropes and swinging the enemies like that. You want to go up the ropes with this type of a crosshair placement, clearing that angle like this, moving up, jumping to this ledge, and then from this ledge, Picking the enemies, swinging the enemies, and killing them, you know. Clearing that position, clearing that position. Because if you use the ropes in the way that Sage did it, you're in a huge disadvantage, movement, and picking disadvantage, and you're not ready to pick immediate gunfire with the enemies. Like, this shooting error is gonna look like that. She can also slow orbit before going up the rope. True, true. Like, like uh, one thing that I definitely do as a jet player, uh, as a as a sage player. Like, if I'm playing sage on fracture, I will all, before going up the ropes. You should ninety percent of the times, if you're clearing the tower alone, slow orb there, go up, do you know, wait for the slow orb to dissipate, peak, peak, peak. In these lobbies, like uh, in, in, in silver, iron, bronze, gold, platinum, diamond, even if you're playing jet, carry the fucking spike. Like, you never know what your spike carrier is gonna do in those lobbies. It is better that the spike is close to you than spike being, you know, god knows where. Like, especially if you're playing a siege, pick up the spike every round. Unless the gecko wanna carry it and plant the spike with the wingman and just carry the spike. You, you don't wanna play on the attacker's side, retaking the spike game. You wanna play, you know, attacking the sites game. There. Enemy e even if I play Omen and I play aggressive, yes, but what, you know, what I would do with Omen is like, you, you will see me when I play this uh, Jet to Immortal series. A lot of times I carry the spike myself. But I, I, I don't actually execute the spike, uh, the, the site with the spike. What I do is when I reach the choke point, I quickly drop the spike and I execute the site. Just to make sure that the spike is there, you know, like so th th that my spike is not on A site while I'm trying to execute a B site. I'm gonna read, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick that spike later. Where must you keep up? Uh, stop ADSing and learn how to fight the enemies with a hip fire. Like in this range, and when you're taking these gunfights, you cannot fight the enemies with the ADS. It is better to fight the enemies with a hip fire. You only want to ADS in a long range gunfight when you're clearing, peeking, or holding a narrow angles where you're just going for a few taps or a burst fire. And when you're very low HP, sometimes you want to ADS to be more precise to rip off the enemy's head because you're only going for the one taps. There's probably uh, some other cases when you should use the ADS, but in this fight, we're never using the ADS. Like here, if I see the race, 
rays start shooting at me. I'm trying to kill that rays with strafing type of movement, left and right, crouching, shooting, etc, etc. Did you see that Dr. Freezy managed to hit Immortal on shorty only? Bro, in this game, as I said multiple times, anyone can be Immortal, a anyone can be Radiant, and not to mention Immortal. Like, you can reach Immortal in, in Valorant uh, without arms, without hands. The only thing that you need is brain and, and some kind of a way to play the game without the hands and arms. Like, you can reach Immortal with knife only. Like, literally. Like, it's so easy in this game being in higher ranks. Like, I, I don't know why people have such a hard time, you know, playing playing Valorant. Like, uh, for example, CSGO was 20 times harder game than Valorant, like, when I played it. Pray and pray. Okay. I, I I think I think that we don't need to to discuss like <laughs> we don't need to we don't need to discuss this like uh, shooting technique. I mean, if you already want to shoot like this, and you you're already spraying so much, just play a phantom man. Like literally, you'll find you you will take ten times more kills with phantom than with vandal. But but th this needs to be fixed. Like this is, you know, we 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 cannot avoid this problem. Like, this is a huge problem. Like you need to be confident to take a fight. Like if the enemy already peeks you on tower, and that's all that goes for a fight. You don't need to crouch. You don't need to do. You don't need to run and gun. Just shoot at the enemy. Like you're you're trying to run and gun a lot. Like, yeah, sometimes the RNG will work in your favor, but majority of times you're just gonna die. Take your time to take the gunfights with the enemies. Like in Valorant, it is much more important to be smooth, precise, with a proper movement and crosshair placement, than being a flashy and flicky type of player. Here. Right here. Smooth is good. Help the jet. Also, what I've noticed in your gameplay, you're way, way too slow to support your teammates uh, when they're pushing the bomb sites and when they're executing the sites. Like right now, I would already be at the butthole of my jet and I would try to support my jet. Like, uh, even though you're playing Sage, like your job is not to go into the site fifth. You need to go at least second in the site or something, maybe even first, because you need to do the wall for your teammates to enter the site and to have easier time taking the site control, especially on Fracture. Like on Fracture, when I'm playing Sage, I'm playing Sage like a duelist. Because you always need to do the wall, you know, this wall here to cross the B main. When, when you're pushing the, the B site, you need to do this wall entering the site. When I'm pushing the A main area of the map and A site, if I'm going through the A main only through this position, I need to do this as fast as possible, entering the site. If I'm pushing through the sand, you know, I'm doing a slow orb there, slowing down the enemies, clearing this, clearing this, clearing that, doing the city wall, entering the site. If I'm going through the dish, we can use the wall, like, uh, this wall is shit, like basically you should just wait for, you know, just push the site and then do the wall. And also, what is really important when you're playing Sage is denying the space of the enemies and denying the peak of the enemies and movement with your slow orbs. Like, if I'm already pushing the A site and my jet is going in front of me, I'm gonna give that jet, you know, some slow orbs that are gonna punish the enemy's movement and the enemy's peaks. And a lot of times what's gonna happen in these low elo lobbies, if, if enemy is playing, let's say, up there, or enemy is playing down here, right here. He will not have the confidence to do anything. He will just be stuck on this position. 
and your jet and you can take easy frags when you enter the site together. Oh, that's a wrong key, wrong key. Wrong. Misslick, misslick. Yo, Nefex, look see, man. I'm going B. In in this round, much better idea. Like like as as I said, you don't need to rush out planting the spike as soon as possible. Like if you have time to do something else, something that is better, fighting the fights with the enemies, or just you know, something that is more important, do it. Now here, we can easily pick up the orb, go back to A, revive our teammates, and push A set again. My, my man, my man is the ADS machine, bro. Play, playing, my man is playing Call of Duty. A lot of Call of Duty. In this scenario, only God can help you, like, basically, you know, you need to kill that race before that race kills you. But also, like, uh, you didn't really need to push that race in that scenario. Like, uh, if, for example, let's say I've, I ended up in this clutch scenario where they ended up. And I ended up on the site and enemies are there, there, and race is using the ultimate there. I would instantly wall off that race so she cannot peek me with the ultimate, do the slow orb there. Start planting the spike, or here, or maybe baiting the guy there, picking a fight there, and I would try to take the arcade control and try to surprise the enemies and pressure them. Down, B. Right there. Generally speaking, like, majority of, like, uh, you guys would win 10 times more matches and 10 times more rounds on Fracture if you just prioritize pushing the Arcade and pushing the A-S5. Especially, especially in these low elo lobbies where you're playing with a boosted monkeys and where you cannot trust your teammates. Like just, you know, tell your teammates, let's go 5 Arcade, 5 A-Main and that's it, without any B-Main or Dish Control. Like in Silver, Gold, uh, Bronze, Iron, this is 10 times smarter than allowing your teammates, you know, to take some kind of a fight here fight here and die like alone, splitting the map, playing a default or some shit like that. You are way too slow to support your teammates and you need to move a bit faster with them. Like your brimstone cannot be here and you're here. There's not a single scenario where that happens. Like if my brimstone is there. I'm already close to him on the right, so I can play on his contact and peek together with him. In this round, we also made a small, small like, uh, economy mistake. What was the economy mistake here? So, look at this. Uh, this guy has shit tons of credits. And instead of going for the light shield and vandal, he goes for the sh Sheriff and Heavy Shield because his teammates are saving. Is that a good idea? Nope. Like, basically, in this round, he should have bought Lachel and Vendel and tried to win this round, you know, maybe alone or try to, you know... You never know how the round is gonna pan out. You never know, like, uh, when that gun can be valuable. And in the next round, again, you can play a Heavy Shield and Vendel or maybe a Lachel and Vendel, since you have all of the utility available. Generally speaking, like, he, he could have bought something better than stupid Sheriff, like, uh, you know, he could have bought, like, a Bulldog, a Guardian, uh, spec anything better than a Sheriff, like, uh, considering how bad his mechanical skill is right now. Stinger, yeah, like... 
<laughs> like, if you're already not a one-tap machine, like, in Valorant, you never want to play on the things where you're bad. Like, basically, whenever you're playing some kind of a game, League of Legends, Valorant, CSGO, like, you're playing on your strengths. Like, there is something that you're doing better, something that you're doing worse. Like, for example, I cannot be tense. Like, I cannot play Reyna, enter the site, deal five one-taps, and win the round. I need to use my brain. I need to outplay the enemies. I need to use my utility. I need to create the fights that work in my favor. And that is how I win my gunfights. Here, he is peak gold one, silver three player. His mechanical skill is shit. Do you think that you can effectively use the Sheriff at your current skill level? That doesn't mean that you should not practice the Sheriff and that you should not be fixing your mistakes. But if you're already playing a ranked on your main account, like, you know, play on your strengths, on, on the things that you're good at. Is this guy trying to penetrate the the ultimate there? I mean, th that is actually possible. You, you can penetrate that ultimate, but you need to stand literally, you know, below the ultimate. <laughs> One tap. <laughs> Bro, the, the way that you're picking the angles, the way that you're moving around the angles is is abysmal. Like you need to fix this. Like uh, here, you know, like I I I I I don't want to see this tractor, this this uh, tractor type of movement. Like what is this? I want you to cut the angles. You know, pick this. You know, place your crosser in the wall. Pick the enemies. Pick the enemies. Like. Get to this position. Be a bit more snappy. Like, uh, try to, like, practice that type of a snappy movement. Instead of consistently moving with a shift. And going around the angles like this. Okay, we won this one. He's saving. <laughs> he has shot! <laughs> he has shot. <laughs> Same, like, like, how can you clear this angle? Like, listen guys, like, this applies to you as well, chat. Like, even some of you immortal motherfuckers are doing this. That's why I'm killing you. Like, how can you peek this angle like this? It's impossible. Like, you cannot slow peek this common angle where the enemies can play with operator or generally holding you there. You need to clear that angle with a silent step mechanic, you know, moving in and out. Or borderline, just coming close and jump spotting everything, you know, one by one. Doing this, doing this, and then peeking the enemies. Like... I play this angle here, often times on Fracture, I hold it like this, the easiest kills of my life. Like, like I take a, 8 out of 10 times I'm gonna take a kill. Because of a bad movement, a bad utility usage, and generally bad everything. Of enemies. That was surprisingly a bit better, but the cross replacement was off once again. This this was actually much better than what he did before. The cross replacement was just slightly lower. My, my, my guy is listening to us. He is listening to us, man. Is this a backseat coaching live game? Listen, whenever you're moving through the arcade, always make sure to clear the back of the box here because your teammates will never do it. To run. Right 
I mean, if, if you're way too far away from your teammates to heal them, and you have a heal available, it's okay to heal yourself. Even though the Sage heal has been nerfed, I still heal myself quite often, like, uh, uh, when my teammates are just way, way too far away from me. Suka! It's not Suka, man. Like, uh, the problem is, like, uh, you know, you heard that one more enemy is there, and you're trying to swing that enemy like a gorilla around the corner. Instead of trying to, you know, clear him out, maybe slow orb him and then peek him, like... Anyways, you know that one enemy is still on tower, like, you heard the sage up there. Like, you could have just... I don't know, like... You, you, you don't even need to peek, you, you don't even need to fight that enemy alone. You have one minute on the clock. Wait a bit. See what your teammates are gonna do. Where the... you know, pl play with your teammates. He is gonna play Operator. Yes, it's fine. Like, I also play uh, Sage with Operator. But only on the attacker side. I will pick a Sage with Operator, but when? Once in 100 rounds. To punish the enemies. When they are pushing me on the... From a defender side. And when I know exactly where the enemies are playing on the map. To just pick them apart with a... You know, one shot. Does he know right now where the enemies are? I don't know where the fuck enemies are. <laughs> you know, like, I have no idea where the enemies are playing. Like, how can we pick up the op now and just blindly pick up the op and push like B main? Maybe, maybe... Right now, what I would do with this op, I would probably try to go for the kill on tower. Because enemies always pick the tower and enemies always fought you from the tower. Once again, uh, whenever you push into some bomb site, pay attention on the minimap. Pay attention on the minimap. What your teammates did clear and what your teammates didn't clear. The tower is not cleared, but in this scenario, you know where is the rain, and you know where you know the Sova was always playing A, and the rain just flanked you. So I mean, anyways, you have the info, but I highly doubt that uh, you know that. Charlton, do you have a team for Premiere? Yes, sir. We're playing in 40 minutes. One enemy remaining. Okay, he did better on the attack with Operator than he did in any other round when he played Vandal or Phantom. This was actually really good. One mistake that you're doing here when you're pushing this angle, you cannot push this angle like this, you know, like, and enemies have the timing to actually peek you and kill you. Like, if I'm pushing this B main area of the map with op, I would always push it like this, you know. I would be crouching, moving towards left, left, I would be scoped in, and I would move towards the left side, like this. You know, crouching a bit, like, playing with the enemies, crosshair placement, and trying to peek the enemies. At the end of the day, one thing that I heavily avoid on bind, on fracture, is pushing the B site like this. Like, I will always hold this angle first, see if the enemies are gonna peek me, try to kill the enemies there, and I'll come up here, and from this position, I will clear the enemies there, clear the enemies on that spot, clear the enemies there, on top of the box, there, etc, etc. Let's go A. Okay, let's go A. Go A, my man, you have the ultimate! This is a huge waste of time. I mean, yes, this Sova 
can push him right now, but I highly doubt that, uh, you know, like, basically, once again, you cannot trust your teammates this much. Like, uh, right now, I will be pushing towards the A side and playing with my teammates at all costs. Only because your teammates are, you know, not that good. I'm flank. It is completely fine that you push the sand here with your jet, but I definitely would have like, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, like, like, once again, mechanics here fucked you up completely. I don't know. Okay, that was the attack. That was the attack, full of shenanigans. As it was, man, welcome back, bro. We're playing in, in 40 minutes. I know, I know, I know. Yo, Acid, do we need to be exactly on time on 8? Or can we start the queue at 8 and 15 or something like that? Can we start the queue at any moment of time between like 8 and 9? Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Okay! Defender's side of Fracture. The absolutely best strategy on a Defender's side of Fracture is the following. Telling one or two of your teammates, actually two of your teammates, to play the B side. One teammate should be controlling the aim and push or controlling the sand push, and you should be slowly pushing the dish together with one of your allies. So in the first round of Fracture, it is very stupid to play passively, because your teammates... Yo! BLR, man! Thank you for the sub, baby! Okay, that, that, that's gonna be annoying. Okay, so, uh, in the first round on Fracture, you cannot play passively the first round in solo queue. Because your teammates can die in from way too many different positions, way too many different choke points, and even when I'm playing Sage, and even if I'm playing in Radiant and Immortal, I'm gonna do this specific strategy that I'm gonna explain to you right now. So in the first round, what I go for is I'm going for a one or two men aggressive push towards the dish. Two of my teammates are playing B. One or two of my teammates are on A site, taking the information in the A main area of the map. And, essentially, you want to surprise the enemies in the dish area of the map and take the kills right here. So essentially, in the first round, like I would just, if I'm playing Sage, classic light shield wall, and I would tell one of my teammates, hey man, can you push with me, slowly. We're shifting in the dish, peeking the enemies here, pushing, 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 pushing. Enemies are pushing the A side. I'm quickly clearing the dish, going back to A, and using my wall and using my utility to actually, you know, stop or delay the enemy's push. Maybe you can, you know, use a fast wall there, use a fast wall for the sands or some shit like that. It's really up to you. But, you know, depends how the enemies actually push. Now, you're pushing the dish with your teammates slowly, like this. You're pushing, pushing, pushing. Enemy peeks you. You take a fight. Ba 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 ba. Regardless of how that gunfight went, if the enemy survived or he didn't, you should always pull back onto the A side and play passively. Now, I'm pushing the dish. Enemies are not pushing the A main. I don't see enemies here. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I'm clearing this. Pushing. Pushing slowly. Pushing slowly. Making a few steps. Ba 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 ba. Pa, 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 pushing slowly, pushing slowly, pushing slowly. If the enemies push the B side, they will never expect this fast of a rotation from A to B, number one. If enemies didn't push anything, and they are just pushing slowly aiming, I would just run fast through the CT, 
and I will go back onto the A side. And that is how I play the first round of Fracture on every single agent in every single ELO. If you already... Uh, you're making a huge economy mistake on both attack and defense, man. Like, uh, uh, why are you not buying a light shield with a... In the first round, if you're already playing a wall? Afford all of your credits. That light shield is very important. I mean, Classic Pistol is not better than a... Than a Ghost and Sheriff. Or Frenzy. Like, Classic Pistol is only better because we can go... Only good when you have a light shield with it. Like, light shield, Classic, and wall. And if you already decided to play the B site in the first round passively, you should always go for the Arcade Wall. Instantly. Have you started making how to play Jet on every map? Yes, I did, man. Yes, I did. <laughs> 15 meters classic A machine, true man. Night, night. Okay. Sage, can I get, can I have you? Okay. Uh, w listen guys, like, uh, this is the final time I'm gonna be speaking about this. Whenever you're exiting the smokes in Valorant, or entering the smokes, always enter or exit the smokes with the tip of your gun being in the air, in the ground, or sideways. Like, you can enter and exit the smokes like this, you can enter and exit the smokes like this, you can enter and exit the smokes like this, but you should never enter and exit the smokes like this. Especially if you're going slowly, like this sage is doing. Because tip of your gun is always gonna be visible to the enemies. Okay, good with Now, usually, uh, now, if you win the first round, in these lobbies, like in silver, in, in gold, in platinum, diamond, iron, bronze, ascendant, everything that's below immortal, always force buy. Like in this round, right now, you are playing Spectre and Heavy Shield with utility, Bulldog with Heavy Shield with utility, Judge with Heavy Shield and utility. You're playing anything that is not a ghost with a light shield. Because you're risking a lot how this round is gonna pan out. Like, your mechanical skill is not good, mechanical skill of your teammates is not good, and shit show can happen. You don't know in what type of an elo, in what type of a situation your teammates are gonna put you in right now. Yo, Morphine! Good job, man. On, on defender side as a sage, like, you should be consistently doing three type of walls. Like, basically, you wanna wall off the enemies in the B main, you wanna wall off enemies in the arcade, and you wanna wall off enemies in the A main, like this, and take the full A main control. Essentially, like, when you wanna use these walls, depends, you know, where you think enemies are gonna go, and depends which bomb set you're playing. Also, what you can do with all of these walls, you can wall yourself up and just pick the enemies from the walls and try to surprise them. Like, uh, you know, if you're walling off this, you can just wall off yourself. And and while the wall is being deployed, just push so that you're not hitting, you know, the head like I did. Like, I, I, I made a stupid player there. Uh, same goes for the arcade and same goes for the B-main as well. This is uh, the number one mistake that players are making in solo queue when it comes to Fracture. Like, uh, uh, playing the Fracture without any control of the dish, aim in area of the map, or arcade. 
like on fracture controlling some area of the map is very important because enemies can split you from four different draw points and you cannot play passively on this map on this map you need to fight for something and usually the best idea is to consistently fight for the a main area of the map and try to make the pressure onto the enemies there you see in this round enemies have forced you won the first round, and now you're going to lose the second round because you have a ghost and a, and a light shield. Oh, your teammate, your teammate's actually forced. Okay, okay, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Actually, we're going to win this round. And please, if you, if you already want... If you already want to play Sage, like, uh, pay attention on the, on, the, on the scoreboard, and pay attention who is low in your team. Like, a lot of times I've noticed in your gameplay, you're not paying attention on healing your teammates at all. Like, your, your killjoy right now is at 1 HP, and you still didn't heal her, even after 5 seconds. I mean, your teammates are consistently reminding you to heal them, instead of you supporting your teammates and healing them without any reminder. Okay, okay. Say something. Bro, are you saving money for the... For the wedding ring of your spouse or something? Like, like what's happening here? Like, uh, literally... Why are you playing Spectre right now? Drop the Spectre to one of your teammates that died. Drop to Spectre, like, uh, to, to, to the Gecko, to the Jet, I, I don't know who died in the last round, and buy a Vendel. Like, you, in the last round, you save money so that you can purchase gun in this round. Like, I mean, what's the problem? Like, you have money to buy for the next two rounds in a row. Okay. Then this economy management issue also happened in the Reina Vod. Yes, sir, Ski. Say something. Hello, hello. Say Habla something. Espanol. Vamonos! Si, si, senora. Uh, this type of an angle, not even tens can hold with a Spectre. So, it is absolutely bad to hold this type of an angle with a Spectre. With Spectre, you want to primarily close the gap with the enemies. Fight the enemies in a close range gunfights, this angle is no bueno. Like here, I would just be getting information for myself and my team by jiggle peeking the enemies, jump spotting the enemies, and forcing the enemies to push me in the face so that I can run and gun them with a specter. Okay, good, good. Crosshair placement from Ohio. Crosshair placement is really bad, but probably he's gonna kill somehow with a run and gun the enemy. Yeah, like, uh, whatever. Yo, th this is why I use the Spectre. Like, I don't know. Okay. Even, even with the bad crosshair placement, my dude, like, killed two of them. <laughs> what exactly is the Premier Charlatan? It is the tournament mode where you qualify for the ter tournaments in Valorant. Okay, okay I, I think up until now, you know, since we demolished the enemies on B in the previous round, right now I would expect... So like, listen, uh, in this round we have two options. We either play A, because in the previous round we demolished the enemies on B, so I really think enemies will not push B this round. And also, uh, one benefit of you playing Sage on Fracture is the following. Notice minimap right now. Remember this minimap. So, our jet is going for the pick in Arcade. Our jet is moving there. Can we trust that teammate? Absolutely not. In, go in gold and silver, I don't trust this jet. So, 
What I would do if I was playing Sage, at the start of the round, I would put this wall and I would push Arcade together with my jet so that I, so that I can support her and trade her if she does something wrong. Because right now enemies are equal and held by. It is, stu very, it is very stupid to aggress the enemies, but sometimes you just cannot control your teammates and they're gonna go for these type of plays regardlessly. At what level do you start trusting your teammates? Immortal 3, 400 plus. Speed, BB. This wall that you're doing is very weird, but it can work. Like, uh, it's okay. I mean, I don't know. Are there any disadvantages if you put a wall like this? To be honest, like, there's not, like, uh,. Maybe it's even better to do a wall like this in, in, in B main. Maybe rotating. Here you need to be careful, one guy can be behind the wall. G generally speaking, this push that you're doing right now doesn't make any sense. Like, uh, whenever enemies are eco, how by, enemies have much worse weapons than you have. You just want to play with your teammates and you want to play long-range gunfights and just play, you know, play the fights that favor you. Like, there's no reason now to go for the push, for the flank, for the lurk. Like, uh, right now you're rushing towards the gecko, healing the gecko, and just demolishing the enemies with better weapons that you have. Also, you didn't clear behind the wall there. You didn't clear the angle behind you. One enemy could have stayed here lurking, and we can die in a horrible death. When you're going for these lurks and flanks, even if you're going with the knife out, still clear everything. Because if you miss that one enemy, and that enemy has a trigger of this... I almost died. Uh, if that enemy has a trigger discipline to let you pass, shenanigans can happen. Shenanigans can happen. Like, I will still clear this. You know, clear this. Clear that. Clear that. Move forward. Clear this. Clear this. Clear that. Clear all of these angles, even if I'm running. But anyways, in this specific round, it would have been 10 times smarter to just connect with your teammates through the CT as fast as possible. You have better guns, higher advantage, you can heal the gecko, etc, etc. It's all you, little homie! This was lucky as fuck, man. This was lucky as fuck. If that raise actually peaked the gecko when he was doing the ultimate, GG, man. <laughs> so, what? Okay. Once more. I I imagine if that gecko detained everyone on the site and they couldn't defuse the spike. <laughs> Now, with a Vandal, you can hold this type of an angle. But in order to hold this type of an angle, you definitely need a much higher reaction time than you have. Usually what I recommend the players, like, if you already want to follow my rules and the way that I'm playing the game. So when you're holding this type of an angle, I would just recommend you to place your crosshair on the furthest side from which enemies can peek you. So for example, if the enemies are peeking from left to right, my crosser would be there. And I'm gonna try to catch the enemy peak there. If the enemy stops there, I'm just gonna slightly micro-adjust myself and try to shoot that enemy. Here. Have you done any Yoru VOD on your channel before? I think I've done one. Uh, generally speaking, you know, on Fracture, 
your default wall should be the arcade wall. Like, you should be walling the arcade, like, I don't know, 7 out of 12 rounds on, on the fender side. Buenas coming from behind. It's B again. According to his gameplay, what rank Sage would be? Is his gameplay the level of a silver tree? I've seen some platinum players that are worse in my coaching sessions. You you you, you wouldn't believe me, but uh, I've I've coached three thousand plus player players in the past three years. Like uh, I've seen pl platinum players that are worse than this. So yeah, like I mean, this is a regular, you know, silver three shenanigans. Fistic, welcome back, man. Yep. I mean, we discussed all of these mistakes in the previous rounds. To be honest, like uh, I, I don't know, I don't know what even to. What, what, what should I talk about this round? Like, uh, you know, this angle holding was fine. Anyways, we're pushing the arcade. You should have had a wall in arcade and defending the arcade. Here, uh, whenever enemies are splitting you through the arcade. And through the B main area of the map, usually I priori prioritize defending the arcade and punishing the enemies that are going on tower. So in this scenario, if I'm alone on the site, while the enemies are pushing the arcade, pushing the tower, pushing the B main, you need to prioritize playing the tower and punishing the enemies that are going up the rope right here. Like, you were in such a dangerous position where if the enemies were just slightly better, with their push and with their utility users, you would have died in a horrible death. It's B again. This lore was actually good. You know, like, the, this lore was fine. Like, it could have been a bit better, to be honest. But, you know, it was good to slow down the push of the enemies there. But if you already slow down the enemies there, you should have focused on fighting the enemies that are already on site. You know, I, I would have done that slow orb so that I can fight the fights with my brimstone in the canteen. Not to wait for the enemies to push me again. Use your slow orbs, you know, to your advantage, to deny the space of the enemies, to deny the push of the enemies, to on both attackers and defenders' side. It's just that this, you know, Raze has mental issues and she pushed through this, like, you know, slowly. Yikes. Right there. Sure. Fast rotation, we have the spike. This wall was completely unnecessary. I mean, we have the alarm bot, we have two nanoswarms there. This is like a waste of 400 credits. Right now, I would just play with my Killjoy, defend the spike there, play the dish, and that's it. Like, I wouldn't do anything else. Basically, I mean, if, if, if the spike is already there, there's no reason to fight the enemies anymore. Having a spike all the way deep there into the dish is such a great spot. I mean, uh, enemies need to jump on top of this platform to peek you. All of this area of the map can easily be controlled. And and uh, I, I, I don't know why would we fight the enemies on A-set anymore. Like, if they use the ro Like, one of your teammates can just be here watching the ropes. One of your teammates can watch the jump here. 
And the second teammate can watch the push. There. Just play with the killjoy and that's it. Like, no need to risk some 50 50 fights. I, I, listen, man, I, I, I talked about all of this, like, uh, at the start of this VOD review. You need to chill, like, a, a, a bit when you're trying to fight the enemies. Like, you need to be a bit more confident in your shots, and you need to do a lot of aim training. Both aim and movement training. Headshot! <laughs> I don't understand why you are zooming in, zooming out. Like, when I'm holding these narrow angles, I'm not letting anything else distract me. Because if, even, if you miss a single pixel of the enemies, you're dead. Like, when you hold these tight angles, you're staying still, fully focusing on the very first pixel of the enemies that are picking you, the very first yellow color that you see on the screen, you're starting to shoot, one burst fire, getting back. Like, the only thing that I will check sometimes when I'm holding this angle is if something else happens on the map. Like, my teammates start rotating. I see some kind of a utility. Somebody dies. I'm gonna check the minimap quickly for one second to see what happened, and I'm back on the angle. Like, on these angles, if you miss one pixel, you're dead. Spawn. My dude died from a full uh, run and gun marshalman. <laughs> now we're we're playing off. <laughs> Listen, I feel that your reaction time is nowhere good to hold these angles right now. So if you have a problem holding these narrow angles, just hold them a bit wider. Y you don't need to hold it like this. At least not in this lobby. Like, in this lobby, nobody has good movement, nobody has good aim, nobody has good picking techniques anyways. It's completely fine, hold it like this, man. Just make sure that, you know, you have some chances of killing the enemy. Okay, shorty time! Shorty time, boys! Is he gonna pull out the shorty? What do you think, chat? Is he pulling the shorty out? I really hope so. No, no, no. Oh, no. Ah, man. Like, if, if, if I had a shorty right now, I would just, you know, shit on the enemies through their smokes. Like, it is so easy in these lobbies. Like, if the enemy Brimstone already gives you this smoke, I would have instantly pulled out a shorty, play into the smoke, bam, bam. Reload. Bam, bam. Like, Basically, in these lobbies, players don't know where the fuck they are. It is so easy to outmaneuver them around the smokes, and so easy to get the kills with the shorty when they give you some kind of a bad smoke. Shorty, shorty, shorty. Now you need to take the op. Now you need to take the op. You don't have range for the shorty. Up! Kill the brimstone! Up! <laughs> Enemy tried to wall over his wall like this, man. I mean, in this round, like, just play with your teammates. Uh, make sure that you're covering all of the angles where this sova can be. Play on the numbers and that's it. You know, like, like this is a basic level of knowledge of Valorant. Like, right now, I would just play with a Gecko, pick up the gun from the ground, and make sure that I'm able to refrag him. Because this Soba is probably underpass anyway, so... Yeah. Now 
no need to push, just hold the angle. Hold the cross. No, don't push, don't push, don't push, don't push. Don't push. Don't, you're not gonna push. You're not. Right. <sighs> okay, this was a bit lucky because the the, the killjoy used the ropes, and and the soa was fully focused on the ropes. I mean, lucky. Not lucky at all, man. Not lucky at all. He planned everything. He planned everything. He knew that the soa is gonna be distracted. By that ropes. Calculated. Especially with operator. When you're holding these narrow angles. You never hold the angle from which enemies are peeking you. So I'm never holding this. I'm always holding this. I'm holding the widest swing. If the enemy stops there, I'm doing a micro adjustment and doing that. If the enemy is swinging fast, I'm just shooting when the enemy gets on my crosser. Ah! Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit, you know? <laughs> This was a nice try. This was a nice try. I, I actually loved it. It was not that bad. 138, man. 138. Uh, but uh, what you asked? By the way, when I asked Wuhu Jing about it, he just bet me a chance told me that... Christopher, what the fuck did you just say, man? Hello, Papito. I would like to know your opinion on whether it is worth dreaming of becoming a professional in Valorant and trying to raise your rating and improve your game in order to get into the professional scene someday. If not, I'm just going to say one, is there any chance at all? Okay. What? What the fuck did I just read in the chat, man? Is my chat going nuts? Like... So, so the Christopher just said... Like, uh, hello Papito, I would like to know your opinion on whether or not it is worth dreaming of becoming a professional in Valorant and trying to raise your rating and improve your game in order to get into the professional scene someday. If now I'm just an ascendant one, is there any chance at all? Okay? When I asked Avuhu Jin about it, he just banned me in a chat and told me that I'm not good enough and I'm not even playing a game much. What? What the fuck am I reading, man? <laughs> what the fuck is happening here? Uh, listen. I firmly believe that uh, from my experience that anyone can be a professional player in any esports game. No matter how good, gifted, or bad you are. As long as you put in the hard work, and as long as you're focused on, you know, that goal. Now, that also me doesn't mean that you will play for the tier 1 teams. Not everyone will play for Sentinels, TSM, I don't know, EG, Fnatic, etc, etc. But I, I firmly believe that if you focus on your goals, you're definitely able to achieve them. And even if you're playing for the tier 2 and tier 3 orgs, that is already an achievement and you can live from that in esports. Depending where you live. Now, when I play CSGO professionally, I played with some players. I was, a very, I was very young and I was very uneducated about esports. And I was very, uh, how can I say this, like, uh, I was egoistic a bit. And I've played with play some players that I thought will never, ever, ever become a professional player in CSGO. That they will never touch any qualification for a major, let alone any major tournaments. And now, these players are playing for the Tier 2 and Tier 1 org organizations. 
only because they played the game so fucking much and for such a long time that they got on that level after so many years. So, the real question is how much effort you're willing to put in, how much money you're willing to put into your, into that journey, and how much like uh, you're going to actually try hard. Because these players that I play CSGO with, that I thought will never become a professionals, they hired so many different coaches, they played in so many different teams, they play, basically they are playing the CSGO for the past 10 years. For like, five to six hours daily minimum but in my opinion if you ask me like eight years ago if they would ever be a professional players i would say there is no way but obviously there is a way so i really feel that anyone can be a radiant player anyone can be a professional player depending what you consider a professional but not everyone will make it because of different you know lives because of different mindsets different like uh, you know approaches etc etc like talent does exist but at the end of the day if the talent doesn't work do a hard work talent is kind of meaningless Listen, man, like, when, when it comes to this sage talent, please hold these angles a bit wider, like, you don't have reaction time for this. Charlatan, in the book Outliers, it's basically proven that mastery of a given skill happens with time. 10,000 hours for most people, and if you're talented, you might only need 9,000 hours. Uh, that is actually true, like... Like, uh, if somebody would reviews my games, and somebody would reviews my gameplay, you would say... Some people would say that I just have a gifted intuition to make a proper game decisions. You know, like, that I'm playing an intuitive gameplay. But that's not fucking true. I've been playing video games from when I was three years old. What type of intuition do I have, man? Like, like I've spent my life with video games. <laughs> like, you're gonna build up the intuition for anything in life if you're sticking to that shit, like, for such a long period of time. Sage, can you hear me? I'm Hold on, hold on. No, with your oils. Listen, ah. this is exactly the reason why you're carrying a shorty when you're playing Operator. So, in this scenario, if I already have a Gecko in front of me... So, look at the scenario. So I have a so I have a gecko in front of me. I would instantly push into the smoke, trying to pressure the enemies with a gecko ultimate and use the shorty to kill the enemies. Now, at this I moment of time, when you saw on the minimap that both Brimstone and Sage are on the bomb site, I would have immediately went into the A main area of the map and I would have revived my teammates. No with your oils. Ah, oh, okay. One enemy remaining. Last player standing. Okay, good. I mean, Bulldog is fine. Bro, this, this kill your ultimate is so bad, man. This killer should have done the ultimate here, and not like all the way there. Yeah. 
fuck, sorry mates. Eighty stage, forty blue. You will not kill my allies. A, A was bait, they are B. Yeah. I mean, I was talking about this already in this VOD review. Like, there's nothing I can say more. So, well. On Fracture, when it comes to your rotations, you can definitely do a bit faster rotation when, when enemies take some crucial map control from you. Like, for example, if enemies already have a control of this, you can initiate some kind of a lurk and flank, or you can start a rotation from the A site. When enemies take a control of the sand on A site, you can already start a rotation or some kind of a lurk or flank. Okay, we're moving into the overtime, but we're not gonna vote review overtime because I think we covered all of the most important topics uh, uh, at the start of this vote review. This vote review will be uploaded on, on YouTube, on my second YouTube channel, so you're gonna be able to watch it from the beginning if you're just joining in right now. Uh, borderline, if you improve, if you improve the way that you're moving, the way that you're picking the enemies, the way that you're holding the angles, the way that you're using utility, and also if you improve your crosshair placement, you are already platinum, basically. If you manage with this type of a mechanical skill to get to gold one, like diamond easy, basically. Like, like I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, your mechanics, when it comes to shooting techniques, crosshair placement and movement are terrible. And at the start of this VOD review, I've explained exactly how you should improve all of this stuff. Okay, right now I need to like uh, warm up for the premiere and we are playing the premiere tournament. Okay, I'm done with this. Anyways, this is a free vote review.